And <clears throat> oh, my glasses are in the way. I got them. This might be a thing. Might be. Might might be a thing. Yeah. We're back. Um, we have we have some. We don't have a lot today. It's episode sixteen. Smokes puts us at four months. Four months. We normally have a crazy back and forth before we get into emails, and I only have one conversation that I want to have before we get into emails. Mm. I'll wait until you're done. No, you can go with this hair in my eye. This is my problem child. My right eyeball. So my mom was getting her hair done the other day and um, was telling the hairstylist about our podcast because she's in a new relationship Mm -hmm. saying like, you know, we're going to, you know, we've got all this great communication advice and she's hyping us up and talking to her, talking to her daughter. She needs to tell her new man who lives in another city a couple hours away. And um, chick was like, yeah, you know, I'll look into it, whatever. Well, three hours after they had that conversation, he screenshotted our YouTube and sent it to her or like sent her a link to our YouTube or something like that and was like, Hey, I just found these guys on YouTube. We should should listen to them. So, uh, it, it, cool on the algorithm for <laughs> right. YouTube for actually doing that. But it really makes me feel like we're we're like really reaching people. Oh yeah, we're getting healthy out here, <clears throat> bitches. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty exciting. It is it, dope. It feels good knowing that our content is actually helping. I also got so you you're the everybody loves you, right? So like you get recognized constantly. Yeah, I've gotten recognized about four times now out in right. public. Which is almost every single time you've gone out. Yeah. To be realistically. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> That's um, crazy. I went out yesterday to pick up the shirts. Yeah. And the chick that works at the store knows me because of the tattoo shop. Mm-hmm. Um was like, Hey, I love your podcast. My <laughs> my mom is now listening to it too. And I was like, Oh shit. That's crazy. And then crazy. you know, we got into a conversation about it at the bank. And um while I was Doing something yesterday, uh, my phone went off and somebody that is a client of the shop was like, bro, I've been li- I've been binge listening to your shit on Spotify at, at the shop all day today. He's like, thank you so much for the content. And I was like, you're, you're welcome. How are you listening? And he's like, Spotify. And I'm like, damn. YouTube. Yeah. He can't though because <laughs> the signal in his shop is so bad he can only listen to the audio. Yeah. But he binged our entire shit yesterday while he was at work. That's crazy. It is. Yeah. feels really f-ing good seeing the growth. Oh. Damn, dropped the F-bomb in the first three minutes. It feels really good seeing the growth that we've had through all of this and that um, it's just the changes that are coming. I had to message the Discord earlier. I was like, guys, this is a really embarrassing question. What time is the live tonight? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And like four or five and they were like 7 p.m., 7 p.m. And I was like, oh, thank God, because I was going to say eight. I don't have my shit together. <laughs> That's funny. I feel like I have a, I have like 300 personal assistants in that chat. Yeah. <laughs> Minions. They're remembering shit for me like Monday morning. Yeah, they're like, the your passport, your passport. And I was too prideful to be like, damn, guys, like you really came in clutch. I was like, eh, I already got it done. I'm just taken care of. <laughs> when in reality, I saw it popping up and I went immediately to the website and got my shit for the renewal. <sighs> they got my back. That's funny. I wonder if I should set my camera up like my phone on a tripod and your phone on a tripod aimed at like yours at you and mine at mine and start our YouTube live with TikTok going at the same time. I think that'd be good. Then halfway through, be like, all right, uh, TikTok. Yeah. Bye, TikTok. I think before we actually delve into the love languages. Right. I think we should read like one one blurb and be like, all right, if you want to see the rest of it, jump on YouTube. Ooh, that's big brain. Look at me being part of a business mogul. <laughs> That's funny. I really like my eyeliner like this, the thinner. Yeah, I do too. I can only think, well, oh, there's too much happening right now and I'm getting overstimulated. <laughs> it's my brain, 24-7. Okay, you said there's yeah. A, a random goat screaming back there right now and animal from the Muppets drumming. I could tell with your, you really embodied that. That was good. Sometimes I see my woman doing something and I think, excuse me, madam. And then my brain goes, excuse me, madam. And then my ass goes, excuse me, ma, damn. (laughs) That's me. (laughs) That shit makes me chuckle every time. That makes me feel so good about myself. So silly. Uh. I love that you're so willing to express your love for me on the internet like that. Why wouldn't I? There's dudes out there that are weird about it. 
and they're doing shady shit. So look at me just realizing something about myself. What's that? I've been in relationships where dude, dudes didn't want to post me. Mm. And because it turns out they were doing shady shit. Oh. So you posting me the way you do has been subconsciously satiating that insecurity. Holy shit. Well, for the 720,000 TikTok subscribers and, and 33,000 YouTube subscribers and 425,000 TikTok subscribers, in case you didn't know, we're together. I, I hit that at least, <laughs> at least every other day, daily on a good week. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Beat the brakes off of it like an old truck. <laughs> I don't know why the old truck came in there. But. I was going to say, it's more of like a dump truck. What you gonna do with all that junk? <laughs> all that junk is on this truck. Hey. All right, let's let's get into emails. We we got we have I'm bouncing off that. Shh, stop it. We have we have th- less than three hours before the okay. live stream. So the first one is called "We Need Advice." Dash, we need help. Dash advice. It is so hard to read. I I would I'm. It's safe to assume that when you see send an email in, it's gonna be for one of two reasons. You're gonna say thank you. Or you need advice. Yeah. You can leave that part out from now on. Um, unless you're calling, to sh- sending an email and a shit on us. We get those every once in a while too. Those are fun to read. Yeah. Because, because you took a whole lot of time to do that. You really did. But it's also not an attack on our intelligence. It can be. No. That that person in the on TikTok that I just blocked that had like a, a back and forth. Oh, yeah. Like he, Did you see he, my Shakespearean insult to yeah. him? Yeah, he, he it, assuming that's a dude. I think it's a dude. He's been, I mean, it must be fucking great to ha- not have a life like that. Because to like seriously sit down and have a 50 to 60 comment conversation with somebody arguing on the internet, like you either are constipated and have a whole lot of time pooping or you have no life. Yeah. Yeah. What I, blows my mind is that that dude followed both of us. Yeah. Yeah. I blocked him. I don't have time so you were shit. just following us to hate on us. But you're boosting us in the algorithm. <laughs> so either way, you're helping us out, my guy. Yep. I love it. Keep it going. Can't. I blocked him. I didn't. I don't have time for that shit. Very rarely do I pop on a TikTok and actually respond to things. Yeah. Majority of the time, it's interacting with people who actually care about the content right. and want to have a conversation. But yeah, I interact more on yours than on mine. But I'm yeah. not going to allow people to argue like that on my, my shit. Like, if you're going to be an asshole to somebody and I catch it, you're getting blocked. Yeah. I just don't I don't care enough about you or your thoughts or opinions to allow you to be mean to somebody on my page. If mm. I see it and you're being an ass, you're gone. Yeah, if someone's being degrading, I'll block them. If you're just being ignorant... You're going to get schooled one way or another. Yeah. The commenters are going to do it. Mm -hmm. All right. Email. One, two, three, go. I've been following you guys for a while and I love what you do. I listen to your podcast and really try to evaluate myself and my relationship at all time. I want to be very honest because I need help. I've known my boyfriend for over eight years. We've dated on and off at least four of those years. This is my first real adult relationship and I fear I'm ruining it. To add some backstory, he's 34 and I'm 26. He is very traditional, patient, kind, and always understanding of my needs and perfect in every way. While I understand that no one in this world is actually perfect, in my eyes he is. I'm going to make the same point I made four recordings ago. (laughs) It is okay to think that your partner is perfect in some aspects. You also have to remember that they are a flawed human being. When you put somebody on a pedestal and think that they can do no wrong, when they do finally do you wrong, that's going to shatter your illusion of them. Yeah. It was dangerous. It's going to change your whole perspective of that person. I'm not saying that you can't tell them when you're perfect for me. Just don't treat them like they're God. Did all of that make sense? Yep. Okay. Be careful of who you put on a pedestal. Yeah. Growing up, I didn't have the best relationship with my father, so I always carried the father wound and often looked for someone to fill that void which caused me to be abused emotionally and mentally by men closest to me. He didn't have the best relationships with women. A lot of them cheated on him. When I met him, I never openly showed how damaged I really was, but he came into my life and stayed consistent. It was hard for him to really express his emotions with words the way that I do, but we always found ways to communicate. He trusts me, as he's told me before, and he would always talk about getting me a ring or marrying me. This frightened me, and I ended our relationship because I felt I was undeserving of love that he was giving to me at the time. 
That's um. No offense, but that's a stupid fucking statement. Yeah, it's a very illogical or rational way of thinking. I know. I, I and and I'm not. I'm not hating on him. I just. I was so in love and he was so in love and perfect and everything was great and he loved me and I loved him and he gave me a ring and I gave it back and left him. Because of my trauma. You you are shutting the door on yourself. Yeah. I don't understand that, that mindset. I don't. I mean, I can. I can't understand it. I can't understand rationalizing it and following it through with that mindset. I got a winning lottery ticket, but I don't deserve it. Yeah. Come on. My brain doesn't work that way. I'm mm-hmm. like, I got the winning lottery ticket. Right. Like <laughs> going to Wonka's factory. Doing something. <laughs> I was too young to understand. Fast forward years later after healing and really dealing with my own trauma. We got back together last year. Good that they dealt with their own trauma. Mm-hmm. He always tells me I'm the one that got away. That is a very serious statement for a man to say. Yeah, but you you didn't because you're back. Right. You're the one that, that left. Mm-hmm. You didn't get away, you left. Yeah, that is true. And then you came back. So from a man's perspective, what does that mean? Say she doesn't come back and a man says she's the one that got away. What does that mean? I mean, it depends on the man. I, I firmly believe that we love different, right? right? Every every single relationship that you will ever have, you will love differently. Um, if you even fall in love, mm-hmm. like your love will not feel the same from person to person. It's, it just doesn't work that way. You grow, they grow, situations change, they evolve. Uh, in my mind, the one that got away is the one that you were madly in love with and it just didn't work for whatever reason and they you never see them again. Mm-hmm. Um, Obviously, if they come back into your life, they're you know you can confess your love for them if that's what you want to do. But I don't think that they're the one that got away, especially if you got back with them. But I, I think that people are also more caught up in a time. Mm-hmm. I, I really believe that you know when you when you um, you have like that nostalgic mindset for things, and like there are going to be times in your life that were really fucking good, and everything the planets aligned, and God was good, and everything just did what it was supposed to do. And whoever was with you in that time in your life, you're always going to favor that because you had such an amazing situation. It doesn't mean that you were madly in love and they were perfect for you. It just, I don't know. Just that was a good time. Yeah, it was a good, um, I mean, th- when you say it like that, it, <laughs> it was de- it was a good time. Oh my goodness. You were a good time. No. No, but yeah, that, I mean, that's. In the- a life full of shit, that right. was one of the happier moments. Right. And when somebody is a part of that happy moment, you cling to that person because yes. they were a part. Right. It, I think it. that you're holding on to the memory of what was. Okay. Because it could be, it could be that they were very much madly in love and that was their person. Mm-hmm. But if you leave somebody and four years later you see them again, you are not the same person you were four years ago. Life experience has changed you. Right. So, and it's changed them. And you guys could be on two very different opposite ends of the spectrum at that point and trying to have a conversation may not even work. Yeah. So just look back and be like, it was a good time. Mm hmm. And then look for it again. It's way easier. Yeah. You're less likely to run into shit that way. That's a very good thing to apply to. And X is an X for a reason. Yep. <laughs> when you're feeling nostalgic and you're missing somebody and you don't want to be alone, you left Jeffrey for a reason. Yeah, you know that you they, left Sue for a reason. Yeah. You know that they say that we hold on to um, the good times mm-hmm. in our brain differently than the bad times, which is why when somebody's been apart with somebody for a year or two, they miss them and they miss the good times that they had and they don't reflect on all the negative shit. They stay really reminisce on all of the really good times. And that's why people have that, that look back fondness. Right. Well, you wouldn't want to look back on the nasty bars right. because it hurts. Yep. Makes sense. The brain's conditioned to bring back the happier memories to the forefront to get over whatever pain you're in. Yep. Things started getting serious again, talking marriage and our future. He finally opened up to me about his feelings, something he struggled with talking about in the past. Oh, man's going to, oh, just going to set himself up for failure and be like, here's your ring so you can give it back to him. Yeah. Does does that actually happen? Um, Well, I don't know. Oh, oh. No, I don't know, but... Because that's where my mindset would be. Even if we worked it out and things were great, I'd be very fucking hesitant to give you a ring ever again. Standoffish, definitely. 
Be, that, like, be like, oh, you want to get married? You can fucking propose. Get on a knee. Yeah. <laughs> I, I already touched the stove once. I don't want to get burned like right. that again. Yeah. Sorry. I don't know where this is going. Yeah. We didn't make it this far last time. Well, it made me excited. I truly love him. And I love hearing how much he loves me because I know he feels safe to share and that makes me happy. Recently, he has decided to put our relationship on pause because he doesn't feel financially stable enough right now to give me all that I want when all I really want is him. That's an excuse. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'm over here like crazy. Really? (laughs) It happened to you, too. I don't mean to (coughs) laugh because it's not funny, but that really is like a full circle. Yeah, there's um, if a man wants to, he will. He will. The the money thing can come and go. You you can always make more money. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can always find another job. You can always try to get raises. You can always try to level up. You can always do things to enhance your your quality of life. Mm -hmm. To not get married because you don't have money. I I mean, y'all can go to the courthouse and just sign a document. Yeah, shit could be. I mean, you could do it super super cheap. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand where the the money aspect comes into play. Maybe he wants a stay at home wife and wants to provide for her. And that's to him as a man. And if that's the case, it's a different conversation. Right. But if he was ready to do it four years ago or two years ago or however long ago ago it was, then he should still be able to do it now. Oh, boy, shell shocked. Yeah, Yeah. I think he's using the financial situation as an excuse to kind of mask that he is horrified. Mm. He's going to be rejected again by somebody who in his mind was the one that got away. Maybe. I'm so intrigued. Do continue. Okay. (laughs) He fell into depression. He works 50 plus hours a week on top of trying to be Superman and do everything on his own because that is what he's used to. I started to feel neglected, but I understand why he's working so hard. He was raised traditionally to be a provider and in every other way, he is amazing the way he treats me. He truly is my safe space mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. I don't want to walk away from a good man that loves me because to me, waiting is worth it. But he says he doesn't want to be selfish and ask me to wait. So when you say but, everything that you say up until that point right. is negated when you say but. So let's read that again. And mm-hmm. right before you say but, emphasize but so that we know everything that she just said was negated. Okay. Because that's how communication works. Is someone just I- Ice maker. Oh. Tanner Wright, 50 cal. I want to blow that refrigerator up so bad. Let's just get a new fridge. Yeah, yeah, but it. Do it out back. Uh, no way. <laughs> a Tannerite explosion in our neighborhood would not be a good thing. I no. promise. I don't want to walk away from a good man that loves me because to me waiting is worth it. But. Yeah. He says he doesn't want he doesn't want to be selfish and ask me to wait. So sounds like you're contemplating walking away because that that is what that implies when mm-hmm. you hit that button there. So when you hit that button, I know you said butt in, but button when you hit that button there, when you hit that button. <clears throat> I had a 15 minute nap before we, we recorded. So He's rejuvenated. I, I am a little full of piss and vinegar right now yeah. and I'm having an energy drink. Who y'all are fucked. Oh, wow. That's definitely a combo you got. Mm. I'm going to have a fun night later, guys. <laughs> Yeah, I I would be pretty upset if I knew that you were talking to other people, you were looking for advice and you were like, I do want to stay with her. She means everything to me, but but she's telling me to walk away. When that butt's thrown in there, it means it's being contemplated. Yeah, that's what I understand from that. The way that you phrase your sentences, the way you articulate yourself matters. Even if that's not what she meant when she typed that out, that is how it comes across. Not saying she's wrong for saying it that way. Just note it when speaking the way you articulate matters. That triggered me and I'm and I'm embarrassed to say I let my emotions get the best of me and I got really angry and I yelled at him. Something that we've never done before. How did that serve you? I wondered what triggered her. I'm saying that he's not ready to pull the trigger yet. Was it him saying, I don't want to be selfish and ask you to wait? If we were having a conversation about marriage, knowing that I walked away from you once and like ended everything because you wanted to marry me and I came back and you were to tell me, 
I can't ask you to wait for me because that makes me feel selfish. We would delve further into that and figure out what the root is because it's more than just you not wanting to be selfish. There is an underlining issue there. Getting upset and yelling is going to do nothing but further push that wedge between you two. Right. He forgives me because he knows I didn't mean to be reactive. He apologizes for not being able to show up and be there mentally or emotionally, but I'm not looking for an apology. I just want him to understand that he has me and he doesn't have to do things alone. Pause. Actions speak louder than words. Right. And your previous actions in a time where he thought things were going really good and was trying to marry you and you bailed on him. There's going to be a reserve there. Yeah. They're not. He's nobody's ever going to bounce back from that right away and just be like, yeah, okay, whatever. Fuck it. Let's ride. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. You know, you have to prove yourself at this point. It's more than just getting on the knee and asking at this point. It's going to be in five years into the marriage. Is she just going to walk away? Right. Am I going? I didn't think about that. Am I going to be 60 and she's going to be like, I can't handle taking care of you. I'm leaving. Yep. Didn't even think about the in the marriage aspect. I was yeah. just thinking of getting to the marriage aspect. You, that was a good one. Yep. That's a lot. Because now there's, there's abandonment issues there. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Didn't think about that. I want him to understand that he has me and he doesn't have to do things alone. I reassure him that I'm not leaving or giving up. I'm not afraid anymore. And he tells me that he loves me even during this difficult time. I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm suffocating him by trying to reassure him and be the supportive person I've always been. The fact that he's pulling away has made me want to try harder to bring him back to his amazing self because right now he feels like a stranger. Are, are you actually supporting and being good? Or are you being overbearing and nagging and pushing and trying to control the situa- situation and manipulate it to get what you want out of it? So my question is, are you, is this about making you feel better or is this about making him feel better? Because this is a whole lot of me, 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 me. I feel this way. I feel that way. He's doing this and it's making me feel this way. This man's going through it. She ends it with, I feel like I'm losing my best friend and the man that's supposed to be my husband. You're feeling that way now. A year ago when you walked away, he lost what he was hoping to be his wife. Right. Right. Which is why he was supposed to be the husband. Right. <clears throat> There's well, a, she said the man that's supposed to be my husband because they've discussed marriage at this point too. Right, but they haven't moved forward with it. Right, and it's so, because now he's reserved. Right, so it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be your husband is like, there's a date set and you got a ring on your finger and you guys are about to get married. That's yeah. the supposed to be. That's a good point. Otherwise, you guys are just a discussion. Yeah. It's, it's like people who are like, oh, I'm his fiance. No, you're his fucking girlfriend until you are... Ring on the finger, the date is set, and you guys are moving forward with the the actual marriage, then you are his betrothed. Mm-hmm. Because you can say, yeah, that's my fiance all you want, but if you haven't actually started making plans for that to be a thing, you, you got a placeholder on your finger. Right. To, to be continued. That's how I see that shit. Mm-hmm. I, you guys need to sit down and really implement the check-ins, and you guys need to do that for a little while, and then this needs to get brought up in a check-in. This is giving me the same vibe. So it is not the same situation, but it's giving me the same energy. If this makes sense. When a partner cheats one time, it was a one time thing. It will never happen again. They come back. They now have to deal with the aftershock of their actions. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of the time, years. It could take a decade to get back to the point of we're happy now. We're over it. Everything's great. We have a future ahead of us. You have to reap what you sow. You're eating crow at this point. Yep. And it sucks. And at this point, you have to accept getting back into that relationship. He might not want to move forward with this anymore. He could be recognizing that this is too much for me to be able to forgive. That year could have also changed who he was as a person to the point where he's like, I don't really see the value in marriage anymore. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Especially knowing that you could flake out and just bail on him and take, you know, leave the man fucking high and dry. You know, we actually got an email right before we sat down about somebody. It was a one one like paragraph, maybe five sentences. I was really shitty to my wife. It's been X amount of months. She still throws it in my face. What can I do to make her stop? I'm like, well, you fucked up. Like in my head, I immediately, I almost responded because it was such a short email. Like mm-hmm. you fucking did the crime. You got to do the time. You fucking own your shit and let her process it and get over it. Right. I don't know. I don't got nothing on that one. You need to do the check-ins and you you guys really need to fucking talk to each other because it sounds to me like 
you have ideas of grandeur and he has a whole lot of reserve and fear and it's justified. It is. So it really is. I also want to know you guys have known each other for eight years. You dated on and off for four. So that means if that was the latter half, I didn't even think about that. And they were separated for a year during that, that process. A lot happens in a year, a lot, especially when there's trauma. So like what you think is what you want may not really fucking be what you want. And he could be holding on to how great it was before you guys had that separation. And now you're back together and things don't feel the same because he, his fucking heart was broken. I totally forgot that they dated on and off for four years. Mm -hmm. On and off. Was she the one leaving every single time that they were off? It doesn't say. Now I want to know because if it's been on and off and she's walking away every single time. And now they're finally at the point where he's like, okay, she's going to stay. I'm going to ask her to marry me. We're going to have this amazing life. He thinks everything is great. And then she bails again. Yep. Oh, man. Always need the information, ladies and gentlemen. I got nothing else on that one. Yeah, there definitely has to be conversation. And it sounds like he really needs to figure out what he wants. To me, honestly, the finances, I'm not going to ask you to wait because it's selfish. That sounds like excuses and he's biding for time. Right. I, I, I agree. I do agree with that. I also, I would love to see men get into a position financially before starting a family. I know that it's not always ideal, mm -hmm. but I would love to see financial stability, uh, a career instead of, oops, we ain't got no money. What do we do? <laughs> right. I don't know. Just getting together, playing house and hoping everything's going to fall in line. Right. There are people out there who fucking have a bunch of babies with no, no real anything and do really well for themselves. So I'm not mm -hmm. saying it can't be done, but you know, when you look at statistics, it's normally not that way. Right. I have a little thing on my headphone here. Yeah. That, that has a microphone piece that sticks to it so that it does like Wi-Fi. Yours don't have them. What? Um, I stuck it on there so that when I play video games, I could wear my bare dynamic headphones. Mm hmm. And um, eventually, I'm going to get this fucking thing off of here with my finger. Yeah. Every time we record, I'm trying to stick my finger underneath of the, the sticky glue thing mm -hmm. to try to pop that bitch on there. It is on there, on there. Wow. It's been like two years. Speaking of headphones, I kind of want to play Minecraft with some people in Discord. Okay. Can I get a pair of headphones to play at the computer? There's a pair on the shelf next to my whiskey. I love it when things work out. Yeah, imagine that. All the communication stuff. I have such a dope life. <laughs> we have all the toys. And I all I have to do is say what I want. Minecraft? Yeah, Minecraft. It's super peaceful playing it. Like I don't like playing survival mode. Okay. It's too much anxiety I, for I, me. I, I just want to know how you're going to make that work. Why? In terms of time. Oh, it, probably once a week for okay. an hour. <laughs> okay. Just just curious how the hell that was going to play out. I, so I typically take two to three baths a week. I'm going to supplement a bath with Minecraft. Okay. That works. I'm I'm switching up my self care to change up my routine a little bit. <clears throat> Thirty three minutes in, and we got a Patreon. Patreon. A patron. We have a patron. We have a new patron. We have a new subscriber to our wonderful group of patrons. <laughs> you want to plug it? Sure. So if you haven't, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't checked out the Patreon, you should. All of the links are in the description. We have a new fourth tier, so it's 5, 10, 15, and 20. Five dollar tiers, just a little tip as a thank you. You don't want to be any more involved in the community, but you do want to support us, which is dope. Ten dollar tier. <laughs> I, I, you got up and walked in front of me. <laughs> Ten dollar tier. God, your app looks so good. <laughs> sure. Ten dollar tier. You get exclusive content and early release content. $15 tier, you get those two things along with four live streams, which are now every Sunday night yep. at 8 p.m. As of now. As of now. I wanted to make sure I had the times correct. You guys remember more than I do. And you get access to the Discord, which is constantly popping off. We were talking about bat butts earlier, and I was really enjoying myself. It's just fun. Constant fun. $20 tier gives you an extra link to the Discord so you can give it to a significant other Want to give it to your best friend? Yep. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could technically give it to your best friend. Yeah. Um, we would prefer it be your partner. 
so that in the event that there's actual communication discussion in there, it can be had. Well, what if it's a single friend and she was like, oh my God, we're really going through it. Yeah, it works. I, I'm not judging. I don't really care. I just, yeah. the, and, and I say that like there's always relationship stuff that goes on there. It's not, we have like watch parties in there. Like every time we have a live stream, they go, they put it in the discord. Or if we have a YouTube premiere, they talk about it while it's going on. And mm-hmm. um, all kinds of shenanigans happen. It is a lot of fun. Discord is a fucking blast. Mm-hmm. I, I really like, we originally wanted that. When we first sat down and talked about it, I was like, oh, we could do a Discord too. And we were like, oh, do we really want to monitor a chat room? And we were both like, nope, we don't want to do that. And then as Patreon got bigger, it started getting requests. Mm-hmm. And then when we created, the mods came out of the woodwork and like... They run it. We have such a dope fucking community of we people. We really do. Zeke and Jenny. 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 Alabama. Jenny. 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 Love me, Jenny. Jenny. You're a mama, Jenny. 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 Bye, bye, Jenny. And everybody that's in there, because like now there's even more mods. They've brought Danielle up, and like they they're doing. Dude, they're fucking handling all of it. We don't have to deal with the the tech side of any of it because of Zeke and, and Jen. And like, I'm fucking, I, I love that community. I love that they're so on top of it. I tell them constantly. I try to tell them constantly, like, you guys make my life so easy. Mm-hmm. If they came to me and were like, okay, we need 10 new mods. You need to pick 10 people. I, I couldn't tell you who I would trust in there to moderate. I trust your opinion. Right. Like You guys can, you can, you can handle this. I have all the faith in the world in you. Please don't make me do that. Don't disappoint me. <laughs> yep. Um, and everyone in there is super respectful. The other thing with, um, for those of you who do the Patreon thing, we also have YouTube membership and they get some of the th- same things, but they do not get, um, access, access to discord. So if you do want to sign up on one of the things to support us, Patreon is really where it's at. We have a lot of people that sign up to both because if you sign up on YouTube, you get a green name badge. Yeah, you look different. And people want the the green name badge, but we get supported either way. Mm. For those of you who don't want to support us financially, we totally get it. I wouldn't want to give money to a stranger on the internet either. (coughs) But if you want to continue to see this grow and a bunch of uh, dope shit to continue to happen and our community grow and us continue to make content, you need to check out. um, I'm sorry. You need to share all of our share shit. Send it to everybody. Don't just post it on your Facebook. Like actually send it to people who you think will find value because they, they may subscribe, they could become patrons, like mm-hmm. it could give you something to discuss with your friends. It, you know, sharing is, is is how we're going to grow. People need to, to see the content to decide whether or not they like it and want to do what they're doing. So share the content, even if you're in Patreon or on Discord or a YouTube member, share the shit anyways. Send it to share people it. you know. One final thought. Final thought. If you guys are not aware, we created a, a reaction channel. I don't think I've talked about that on this one. No, you have not. Um, we created a YouTube reaction channel so that we can do reaction videos. Good. Why'd you stop talking. Because I was I was just waiting on you to knock something over or drop something. And I am being delicate. Sure, you are definitely being delicate. You're being very slow, but like a sloth. Yeah, so I didn't knock shit over. <laughs> Uh, we created a reaction channel so that we can do YouTube reactions on about TikToks and YouTube videos, and we can do boxing, unboxing videos, mail drops. If people actually continue to send us shit on in the PO box, we can open those and mm. and just post all that shit. We want to be able to post our life and like share things with you guys. Do vlogs, do random content. You could do skincare. We could do book readings. We could talk about movies, and we can do all of that on another channel instead of doing it here because we don't want to mesh our life with what we're doing with To Be Better. So it's to be better reacts. There will be a link in the description. For those of you who like what we're doing, go go like that channel. Go do the thing. Go team. Hashtag to be better nation. So into the email. What's this one called? What's this one called? No subject. Aw. Y'all, we need subjects. We do. That's how we keep track of what we're doing. It's also how you'll be able to find out whether or not we've answered your email because it'll be listed in the video description. Mm-hmm. At least it should be. My boyfriend and I met online, talked for a while, and then met while he was out my way for work. It got to slow season in his job, as he's in an oil field and can only work weather dependent. He was watching his money as it can range from one to three months of being off of work. I couldn't imagine being off of work for a month straight. I, I can't either. That's um, 
I mean, we did that with the hurricane. Right. But that was hell for me. And right. like we were on vacation yeah. as far as the kids were concerned. And, and that, that two and a half, three weeks was, was, Oh, that was, hell. I can't, <laughs> I can't do that shit. I don't know how people take time off work like that. Like even, even like uh, I had to create my own, my own shit. We started doing this <laughs> yeah. to supplement the downtime. I, I just, I don't know. I was the one going up to see him. He never came down to see me. While dating, I paid for all of our dates, adventures, food, gas, etc. And we always used my vehicle. I didn't think I minded it at the time due to him being off of work and trying to be money conscious. And I really liked him and things were going. But our relationship progressed. His contribution to the relationship didn't change at all. He That's liked- because a, sta- a standard was set. You guys fell into a habitual thing where you made it okay to pay for everything. Use your car, pay for the <clears> bills, <throat> go see him instead of him coming to see you. Right. That set a standard. He also said that he likes it and finds it sexy when she pays. <laughs> yeah. No. I think that's the first time I've actually seen something get a f- visceral reaction. From that you. bothers me. Yeah. It bothers me. I, I, I'm okay with somebody paying for themselves at times, but to pay for me, like I don't even let my <clears throat> friends pay for me when we go out to dinner. Right. Unless they invite it and they, they know the rule. Cause if they play the rule, I can't do anything. But if mm-hmm. they don't know the rule, I'm paying for dinner. I don't like that shit. The idea of some, mm-mm. yeah, nope. Why? <laughs> so that you can hang that over my head later that you did all these things for me. No, I'm good. I don't owe you a fucking thing. I agree, though, that the standard was set that she was going to do all of these things. And the moment it started bothering you, you should have said something. Yep. Because she said specifically, I didn't think I minded it. So at the time, you might be okay with it because you're in the dating phase. He's saving money, whatever's going on. I'm willing to bet it was within the first two years of the relationship. Oh, yeah. And now they're probably past the first two years and she's recognizing all those red flags going, oh, my God, what have I done? Yes, y'all. We now live together. And we'll have a year in April, officially dated since December of 2021. So you are correct. They are still in the two-year illusion of And intimacy. there's already problems in paradise. Already problems. I communicated he needed to be help, needed to be helping provide to the things we enjoy and did together. He was very understanding and did start to help out slightly more, but by no means took the tabs to return the favor for when I paid for majority of things. Wait a minute, are you keeping score? Yeah, are you looking for like interest or something? That's not how that works. You mentioned, hey, this is bothering me, so now he is chipping in. Right. You're not going to get $300 in back payment because you had a problem when you didn't say anything. Right. That's like getting pissed at your wife for cooking meatloaf every night when you really want pizza, but you never said anything. Who doesn't want pizza? Oh, I fucking love pizza. I know we just had pizza like twice this week. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't ask for that again. We, we um, I'm on a Jersey Mike's kick. Yeah, I'm on a Pizza Hut I, kick. I've been eating their giant subs mm-hmm. every time that I get lunch when you're not around. Do you want to do fend you for yourself for dinner? We can do that. We can absolutely do that. I, I would absolutely get a Jersey Mike sub. Oh my God, yes. Um, That, that mindset... Uh, of keeping score and that is going to carry over to everything else as well. If you do something for somebody, you don't get to throw it in their face later. Mm -hmm. And if you do something for someone for a really long fucking time and they don't reciprocate that, you just make that mental note. Okay. They will take as much as they can take. I can only give so much. I'm going to stop giving and see what happens. Yeah. So now when you want to go out, be like, Hey, I would love to go to dinner or we can go do whatever we're doing, but you're paying, you're paying. I don't have any, I can't afford to continue doing that. Still want to go. Cool. Let's go. And they can pay, but they don't owe you. Back pay. Right. Doesn't work that way. He does send me a few hundred dollars for groceries here and there now. Okay. I mean, that's good. Are you guys living together? Yes, they are living together. So then why does he send you money for groceries? Because I'm assuming they have separate bank accounts. So Hmm. she's going shopping and he's sending her money. That's very inconvenient. I also find that inconvenient. I can also understand like if they're not. No, I get it. I just couldn't imagine being in a relationship being like, I got to go grocery shopping. I need money. Hang on. How much do you need? Let me cash up you 500 bucks or yeah. whatever. I would rather just be like, what I was cash do. or yeah. we have a joint account now for these things. Mm-hmm. I would go and open a joint account specifically for that. Like, right. And then just move the money in and go do what you got to do. Right. You guys have your paychecks. You keep your individual bills and whatever. And then you put a 
I'm just thinking potluck, but potluck's not the word. Community pot. Community pot. I'm so hungry and we just ate. I, you know, <clears throat> that's actually not a bad idea for people Yeah. to do that. If you guys are in a relationship with somebody and you keep your finances separate and you want to save together, it would be a very smart thing to open a joint account and every time you get paid, take 10 to 15% of your overall pay mm -hmm. and put it in that account. Yeah. And just let it <clears throat> sit. And if you guys are planning on, on getting married in five years, you'll now have a huge lump of money to like down payment a house. Um, you could have a savings. If you mm -hmm. end up having kids, you could use that as a, another uh, revenue for like college or some shit. Like 10% is not a lot when you really think about it. It's $10 for every hundred you make. Mm -hmm. If you make 500 bucks a month or a week and you can't put $50 aside and just not touch that, you'd be surprised how fast that fucking money adds up. Right. It's no different than our consoles. Mm-hmm. I don't know. For those of you who don't know that, anytime we go anywhere, I pay cash for everything. I try not to ever use my debit card. I want to. I like a cash society. But if I use a twenty dollar bill to buy McDonald's and it's a four dollar thing, everything from that twenty dollar bill is going in my console. Mm -hmm. And in the event that I'm going somewhere and I leave my money clip at home, I have money in my console to get whatever I need. In the event that there's emergency, there's money in my console. Right. I don't ever have to worry about that shit. And before people in the comments go off about the joint account, well, if they have access to it, they can spend all they want. No, they can't. We communicate about money. Right. You know, we have the joint accounts. I have my own separate bank account, but you don't spend money without telling me you're spending money. Right. I mean, if it's, you're not telling me you're spending 50 bucks on Amazon, but if you're making a large purchase or right. you see something and it's a couple of hundred dollars, you can be like, hey, babe, I'm taking $200 out of the savings account just so you know where the money went. Right. People can do each other dirty, though. Oh, yeah. So that is something that is a valid argument. They could spend all the money. Well, I mean, right. if you got somebody that you can't trust, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have a joint account with them. Right. You shouldn't be with them if you can't trust them. Exactly. So there with that joint account, there should definitely be conversations of I'm getting ready to spend three hundred dollars on groceries. Don't pull anything out of the account mm -hmm. or, you know, rents due. We're a little bit short. We're pulling three hundred dollars out of the account. I have a fault that seems to bite me in the ass time and time again, and that's giving to relationships financially, emotionally, serving, etc., and not getting it in return. Okay. So you recognizing that you dump your money into relationships, you recognizing that that is a you problem. Right, but also recognizing it is how you stop it. Right. So now you know that you're a giver, and you find takers, and they take, 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 take. Mm -hmm. Giver can only give so much. Right. A taker will take until you have nothing left to take, and then they'll find somebody else to continue taking. It also sounds like her love tank is empty. Yeah. I if mean, if your love language expressing it as acts of service and supporting financially like gift giving, you can't expect that in return if that's not how if that is not how somebody expresses their love. Yeah. Harmless plug for those of you who don't know about the love languages, we are doing a series on the love languages every Thursday night until we're done mm -hmm. at seven o'clock live on YouTube. And when we're done, they will be in a, a playlist on our YouTube channel for the five love languages. The intro to it is already there. Mm -hmm. We're doing positive affirmations tonight, which this comes out Monday. So mm -hmm. this will be out. It'll be out way before this hits. So if you're watching this and you want to see our shit, go to the playlist five love languages and watch the positive affirmations one. Mm -hmm. um, you will be surprised how much you don't know about your life until you read that book. and You're like, holy shit, everything makes so much sense. Right. Yep. You know, with the words of affirmation, there's actually different dialects of that language. And I've been doing research onto it. There's a lot of different ways to do words of affirmation. If we wanted to like really deep dive into this shit, we could do the five love languages and then do subcategories. Yeah. And really like get into things. We'll see how this plays out tonight. I'm excited to see what you've done because you've been working on it all day. Yeah. Big brain. Big old sexy brain. Mm. What are we going to do tonight, brain? <laughs> Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Plan to take over the world. That is not where my mind went. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my brain know what's going on. I just, it took everything in me to not say Scottish egg. <laughs> what? <laughs> so in the discord, Zeke and I were trying to like figure out what we can call the brain because whatever he said, he was like, that just doesn't work. And he came up with Scottish egg. So it's an egg wrapped in beef that's like wrapped in a crispy outlayer coating. And I'm like, that just makes sense. I really feel like that really captures the cranium with the organic matter in a food format. Discord, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I have so much fun in there.
I'm surprised you didn't know about that moment because that's like such a core memory with the Discord now. I'm not in there like you are. That's wild. I, I hop in for like 20 minutes at a time when I can, mm-hmm. but otherwise I'm not in there. And when I do, I just look to see if I've been mentioned Yeah. so that I'm I'm active in that. Um, I check the photography one a lot because there's a lot of sun, like sky photos in mm-hmm. there. And I, I love dramatic skies. Right. So it could be a really shitty photo with an amazing dramatic sky. And I'm like, oh, it does it for my brain. I love that for you. Yep. I guess expecting something in return is my first mistake to doing something nice. Yes. Don't. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Never do a good deed expecting one back. Right. And don't loan it if you can't afford to lose it. A hundred percent. It always leaves me feeling unworthy of all the things I, pr- I can provide in return. I don't know how to find quality traditional men. That wait, will wait, ch- wait, 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 why, what is, I need you to back up. I don't understand why she feels unworthy or why that I, can you just read that again, please? Okay. So I guess expecting something in return is my first mistake to doing something nice. Right. Yes. It always leaves me feeling unworthy of all the things I provide in return. Okay. Meaning she goes above and beyond and because it's not reciprocated, she doesn't feel. So her act of service is probably one of her love languages, probably her primary love language. Right. It's also. You could be receiving something in return. It's just not the way you want to receive it. Right. That's a, and that's a conversation that should be had. It definitely should be. That also should be something that you think about. If your partner feels like they're going above and beyond for you, but you're not feeling that, that's because you guys aren't communicating the love language you guys need to be. Yep. I hate that we read those books and I understand it so much now. I know. <laughs> <clears throat> because for me, it's always been communicate the problem, communicate the problem, right. talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. Now I'm able to to recognize like you guys are in love, but you're not. You're not communicating the, in the love the language. The action aspect is not there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely feel my brain getting a little bit bigger making these notes. I don't know how to find quality traditional men that will cherish and protect my giving and serving heart. And I don't know what I'm doing so wrong not to deserve it from someone. It's not a matter of deserve. It's a matter of find. Mm-hmm. As, as we, we live in that society, all you have to do is get on the Internet. And you will see why there are less and less traditional men out there, not just because of the way they're shamed and like the way that this is shamed, but the way that women are taught to be now. Yeah. That self-worth, the self-awareness, the integrity, the want to provide, the want to have a a proper fucking household Mm -hmm. is shunned. So there are a lot of men, and I know there's a lot of men because I talk to them daily, there are a lot of fucking men that want what you and I have, that Mm -hmm. want to be the protector and want to be the provider. The problem is, is it's probably like a 10 to one on men who just want to take advantage, smash and call it a day. It's a dying. It is a dying thing, but it is still very much a thing. And you can very much find good men that want to do those things, but you can't settle. Mm -hmm. You have to be very selective in the people that you choose, because if you pick a shitty person and then find Mr. Traditional, he's not going to wreck your house. He's not going to do things to take you away from that man. He's going to see that you're in a relationship and go on. on. Yeah. Yep. Because, yeah, anyways. Anyways. My boyfriend makes substantially more than me. He makes $38 an hour and I make $24 an hour. But he goes a month to three months at a time without working. Right. So if he's going so, so if he's going a month to three months without working and you're making $24 an hour and he's not making anything for three months at a time, you're making more money than he is. So he's making, after taxes, let's say roughly $78,000 a year. If he's working the full time. That's full time minus three months out of the year. Okay. So if she's working, let's just say an eight hour day, five days a week. So he's roughly making about $25,000 more than her a year. If he's working the entire time or with three months off? With the three months off. He's still making 25000 more than her. Roughly. I would say give or take 2000 Okay. But he's still making more money than her. Okay. I, I So I didn't realize this is what you were doing when you were doing the math. Yeah. She says that he's <laughs> off of work one to three months at a time. So if he's if he goes to work for three months and then is off for three months and it goes to work for two months and is off for a month and it goes for three months and is off for a month, it doesn't he's not working oh. the full time. So my understanding was it's just three months off yearly. No. 
So he could go to work for two months, work for three, work for one more month and be off for two. Right. So there's no way of knowing if he actually, okay. on paper, he makes more money. That's crazy. But if he's not actually doing the work, he's not making the money. Right. So, so his income is very it's all unpredictable. Over the place. Right. Okay. That, that's kind of how I felt as a body piercer. Yeah. What's what? feast or famine in the industry regardless? Right. So I could walk away with $40 one day and then walk out with $1,200 the next. Right. Okay. As a whole, you make a decent living right. in a good studio, but when yeah. as an oil rig worker, in reality, he needs to find a better rig because there's you can go to Florida and work year round. Yeah, you go work, work off the golf, like you know what I mean. You go out for three weeks at a time and come in for a week. Mm-hmm. So there's I, I don't know. There's a lot of money in the oil game, right? But you got to work. So she says, in a year, he makes over double what I do due to our hours worked and the differing natures of our jobs. He makes great money, but is not financially responsible. He spends hundreds of dollars a month on video games, cell phone games, data coverage on his cell phone, corn, sex toys, and new gaming consoles. One month on our email, he had a bill of just under $900 for games and corn from his cell phone. Okay, so here's what you do. Find a man that doesn't have a weird sex sex addiction. Mm -hmm. That is actually an adult and not a little boy with adult money. Yep. And don't spoil him. Yes. Don't give him lavish gifts. Don't buy his dinner. Mm -hmm. Let him take you out. Don't tell him you got money. Don't tell him that you make $25 an hour. You keep all that shit secure until you guys start to get serious. Yeah. I I, $900 a month on corn. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. This is you also conditioned him to know that she's got it. I can blow my money on whatever I want because you were paying for everything. And you never said anything about it. Do you know how bad I would feel? Real shit. Yeah. Like real talk. If 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 I if if I got your cell phone bill and I opened it up and there was even fifty dollars and only fans or, or any type of corn or anything like that, you I don't know how I would take that. I feel like that would devastate you. It would, because you're you, in my opinion, that's cheating. Yeah. Like you are fucking cheating on me. And I'm here. I'm with you almost all the time. So in the event that you need that release, even if we don't have time for actual play, we can still have an intimate moment and I can be involved in it and and I could be your focus. Right. I, that, that would also be kind of like a premeditated thing because we are constantly together. That means I am putting it off until, okay, I know he's going to be gone at two o'clock on Thursday. Right. That makes it even worse. Yep. Wild. So knowing that he misses two to you know one to three months at a time on his job and is still pulling in double than her, and he's not contributing nearly enough to like mm-hmm. take on things, that's a huge fucking problem for me. Did what? they say how long they were together? Uh, less than two years, right? Less than two years. I understand he works hard and should treat himself. I just wish it was on things that were more productive and were helping our growth in life. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with having a hobby. Right. There's not. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that buying video games and, and corn right. is, is not productive. If I was him, I would be investing all that extra money into other things, crypto a stocks. Roth. Yeah. Put it, for fuck's sake, a Roth, a simple Roth, even on top of that, a 401k, mutual funds, mm-hmm. firearms, ammo, food supplies, a second house in the middle of nowhere in case I got to get out of Dodge. Be so, I, that That's a little boy thinking. Mm-hmm. This is a prime example of dating a boy and praying he becomes a man because all of a sudden he's in a serious relationship. And and oil rig workers, they make good money. They do. Fuck, dude's pulling almost $40 an hour. If I made that kind of money year round on top of everything else that we're doing, you better believe I'd have another house in a year. Mm -hmm. I really hope this fucking does it. Me too. Really, really hope it does it. Because if not, I'm going to have to gut this house and buy a van. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. If we buy class B vans, hear me out. If we bought a, if we got the, bought the Winnebago Bago Revel, which is my dream van, mm-hmm. four wheel drive, lifted kinda on a Mercedes Sprinter chassis, beds, got the a, a cassette toilet that you can use in an actual shower, and like all the fun off roading capabilities and solar panel, and we could put bikes on electric bikes because I'm lazy, mm-hmm. and we can go and travel and we could do podcasts from fucking anywhere because of T Mobile business class internet almost anywhere. We could get other people who have those things and have like little caravans of traveling and like 
we could go from town to town and meet our Patreon groups and do like seminars, right? Cause we live in the van, just go and do the thing. We could do photography everywhere. And we're like, okay, I've had enough of this shit. I need to charge. We could just go back, go home. Yeah. And we'd have this big fucking house with a podcast room ready to go so that we can recharge and only really work when we want to. That would be dope as fuck. Yeah. I would enjoy that. Can we do, can we do like desert khaki for the van? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can we put like a topographical vinyl overlay on it so that it looks like an old school topographical map, topo map? I want you to do whatever makes you happy, babe. I'm happy. (laughs) Deck deck this out however you want. I'm just excited I get to experience life with you. I'm going to have to redo the vision board. (laughs) (laughs) Man, life is good. Yeah. Yep. And if you're, if you, we end up homeschooling the kids, mm-hmm. we can do that. Right. Because you can teach them on the road. You know what kind of learn they would get traveling like that? Mm-hmm. Plant recognition, animal recognition. Oh, yeah. Once they're old enough, I want to teach them how to hunt. Yeah. Man, it's exciting. It really is exciting. Okay. Okay. Let's get back to the email because I'm going to. No, now I'm like really. This is where the things. reaction channel comes into play. Yeah. Okay. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm excited for our future together. Me too. I am very disciplined with money because I want to be successful. I know things are expensive. We want to buy a house and we'll be going on a month long vacation soon. I wonder who's going to pay for that whole vacation. That's a long vacation. Girl, I hope you are fully prepared to pay for this whole vacation Mm -hmm. because from everything you've said in this email, you're going to come back very bitter. I'm wondering if he's going to bring his video game console with him when he goes. I, Uh, I can't. I can't do that. A month is way too long. I go for oh. four or five days and I'm ready to come the fuck home. Yeah, I'm, we, I'm, I want to crawl out of my skin. We were four days in Tennessee and I was like, I may leave tonight <laughs> yeah. and just drive home overnight. And I was like, ah, maybe not. Yeah. You know, the idea of just sleeping in my own bed does it for me. Right. Can't do that shit. Seven days vacation. If I have to fly somewhere a day out and a day in, mm-hmm. five days is perfect because by the fifth day, I'm ready to go the fuck home. Yeah. Yep. I am a saver and I want a good life and to experience things and provide. So a couple of thoughts. You have to find somebody who has the same goals as you. Mm -hmm. You have to find somebody who's on the same life path as you. You can't be running on two different paths, screaming at each other. This is what we want to do. Yeah. (laughs) Was that a funny visual? No, in my head it absolutely fucking was because there was two people running down a trail throwing an egg at each other. (laughs) Like, catch, it's your turn. Like, I love that. That was not, um, yep. You know what I just thought about also? What did you just think about? And I, I don't know if it's going to happen because this is literally the first time that I've thought about it, but maybe we should put a singles chat into Discord because there are a lot of single people that follow us that join Patreon to learn and do what we're doing. Yeah. And it may not be a bad idea to have a singles chat in there. It's something I would definitely want to oh, run man. by Zeke and Jen, but it, it... I'm going to be honest. I don't know if I want to deal with the drama that comes with well, that. Well, ain't no dealing with nothing. We're just providing a forum for them to discuss and I'm not getting involved in that shit. Right, but what if they start mingling and trying things and then it derails and all of a sudden there's this massive divide in the discord well if it's in that single form i don't think that would be a thing i feel like a conversation for another time i just it's something to consider because if people are are paying to be in patreon it's because they fucking want to have a better life right and if they can you know if we can put two people together that well not we put them together but if we provide a place for them to meet while they're doing the work on themselves, trying to be a better person following what we're doing, Mm -hmm. I do believe they would have a higher chance of success in their relationship moving forward than they would if they just met Joe Blow on the street. You can't tell me I'm wrong in that aspect because... Okay, I think there needs to be a lot of rules with that, though. Well, we discussed that later. I just This is literally the first time I've had the discussion. We've had people ask us to make a dating app. I don't want to do that. No, I'm not going to be a matchmaker. Mm -mm. But if we have a place where people who are already there can come together and talk, at least we would know the ones who are in there are in there versus, you know, you can't be in a general chat, just chopping it up, flirting with people and shit. And half the women in there are married or most of them. Right. So anyways, anywho, he seems to feel he just has to work and come home and have no responsibilities. I do all the cleaning, laundry, cooking, my own vehicle maintenance, shopping, you name it. I have asked he help out more and do things as he sees they need done. He seems very understanding and great when we have discussions about these things. Will be good for a short time and then fall back into his usual thing of not helping. So when he does help, are you acknowledging the help? Are you like, oh my God, babe, that's fantastic. Like, 
We discussed this last week and you're already on top of shit. I like it when you look at me. It gives me butterflies. Like when you used to look at me at the shop. I'm getting emotional. I need to quit. <laughs> I love our relationship and our journey. Yeah. Oh, I want you to know that. I think about it a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I even create a list of ongoing things to keep a house and yard and vehicles requires, and he avoids it. He will walk around over, ignore a mess until someone else deals with it. You trained him to do all that. But damn, she she like legit made a list. And he's like, yeah, fuck this. Yeah. Okay, so here's my thought. Before we even finish this email, okay. you are less than two years into a relationship with this man. Right. You don't own a house. You're not married. You're having a ton of issues with finances, which is one of the biggest stresses in most relationships. He doesn't clean up after himself. He watches corn Mm -hmm. obsessively at the cost of almost $900 a month, plays video games all the time, spends tons of money on that. You are over here trying to save for a house, build a future, be secure, have a safety, have a savings. Does this sound like a scenario where you should be like, yes, marriage is in the cards. This is how I want to spend the rest of my life. I would have walked away when I found out the $900 for corn. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been like, okay. This is the kind of life we have? Cool. No, no thank you. I do, I do not want to participate in this any longer. I'm, I'm going to cancel my subscription. He lacks hygiene. He doesn't brush his teeth. He has teeth that are rotting and needs pulled but neglects getting it done. He is a very sweaty guy, does not apply deodorant or shower regularly. I have to try and ask nicely for him to shower in order for him to do it. I have gotten infection from the lack of hygiene. Girl, you knew he was this nasty and you did it anyway. Is there a lot left to this? Can yes. we just jump to the... Okay. He was made aware and I stressed the need for him to wash and it doesn't change anything because you continue to give him pussy. You know that that, that angers me. You are going to put off your own pH balance just to get dick. Yeast infections are not fun. That is one of the most uncomfortable sensations I can get as a female. I hate it. And you're continuously like, okay, babe, you're kind of gross. And then he comes to you and he's like, okay, yeah, I'll spread my legs. That escalated quickly. And my stomach is turning. I need you to hear that. Was that too much? Was I too harsh? No. I I just. Was I too much? No, I don't do that. I don't do well with teeth. Right. And I don't do all well stinky like hygiene. Things. Right. So there was just a whole like trifecta of disgusting happening there. And it ended with dirty vag. Right. I, I'm just. It just it, it really gets to me when women complain about their man having poor hygiene, but you continue to give it up to a man who has poor hygiene. I have standards. This might sound really shitty of me. If we ever get into it and I notice you got something going on down there, we're not continuing until you shower. Yeah. My yeah. my personal hygiene will not be disrupted because somebody else wants to slack on theirs. I respect my own body and my own comfort too much for that. Nothing changes because there's not a standard. He doesn't seem to understand it's easier to shower daily than wash the bedding multiple times a week and have to go to the doctor for antibiotics. Same with making a mess. If you clean as you go... No one gets stuck with it and it's easier. He just doesn't get it or care the help it seems or care to help it seems. I'm I'm really just getting like mommy vibes. Yeah. You're a mommy that he can have sex with. Which makes it even worse. Right. Like you're paying for everything. He's allowed to buy whatever the hell he wants. He's constantly self-pleasuring like a 16 year old can we get to like something that we can actually help with because i gotta be honest at this point i don't want to continue this email there's nothing in there like if i i would never condone somebody staying in a situation like that because i believe that when you're dating it should be to marry right Right. and i understand because i've had many people be like well not everyone wants marriage so you're way out of line Mm -hmm. i may be that's my fucking opinion Right. And you're watching it, which means you want to hear my opinion. And mm-hmm. if you don't want to hear my opinion or you disagree with it, I don't fucking care. Right. I didn't force you to watch this shit. 
And mm-hmm. I damn sure didn't make you fucking interact with us. Right. So I believe that if you're dating with somebody and you're in your 20s, it's because you're trying to set up yourself for your future. Trying to build a house, trying to fucking white pick a fence, trying to have a family, trying to do all the things that you're doing. And that's why you're in a relationship. Because if you didn't need all of that and you're financially stable like she is, there's nothing there that that man can bring into her life that she's not doing for her fucking self. Right. That's not a redeemable scenario. You're two years in. You're fucking like... Your subscription is about to expire. Two years is nothing. It's nothing. She pretty much goes on to say that he's very secretive with his phone, even though he claims there's nothing to hide. He never opens doors for her. He always walks ahead of her and leaves her in the dust. There was a Christmas party with couples, and he completely abandoned her. She's very goal-oriented with old-school morals and very traditional, which he is all aware of. She questions his desire for her on whether or not he wants to be with her. She never gets compliments outside of sex. He's on, he's only been in two other very short-term relationships, being about three months each. And she just goes on to say, I love this man. We never fight. We never communicate well. We do enjoy a lot of the same things. But key fundamentals are missing. She said she feels like an unappreciative slave in her relationship. He's gotten very comfortable and isn't striving for better. Like I am trying to do, but I feel I'd be further ahead along doing this alone at this point. I'm losing my faith in men. So you're going to allow one man to destroy your faith in good men. Mm -hmm. That makes a whole lot of fucking sense. And you're staying there. I was about to say, you're also choosing to be in this relationship with this man who makes you feel unappreciated. Right. Unappreciated. Staying with a man who's making you lose faith in men. Why? Why? That, that is a irredeemable. The only reason we read that one is because you were going back and forth with her and said we would cover it. Well, I don't remember that. So there, there's a whole lot there that the idea of, of man, anyways, I, I, I don't fucking understand people. I really don't. Two years is not a long time. Right. Like it's really not a long fucking time. And if you're running into red flags while you're still in the obsession phase of each other, you are fucked long term. Mm hmm. Because during that initial two years, you're supposed to be obsessed with this person. Right. And everything is supposed to be great. And you're supposed to overlook all those red flags. And you're not supposed to feel like you're feeling right now. And you are allowing a shitty man Mm -hmm. to disrupt the way that you feel about men in general. So in the event that you leave this man in a year or five years, because the relationship's not going to last, I promise you this is Mm -hmm. not marriage material. You are not. This is not a forever relationship. You are going to be chewed up, used. And destroyed by the time it's done. And then when you go to find another man, you're going to find a good one. And you are going to be the problem because you allowed this to disrupt your future. Yep. You have to look out for future you. No one else is going to do that shit for you. Mm-hmm. Set down optimistic. Thought I was going to help some people. Yeah. And I had to read about dirty teeth and snatchy vag. Yeah. Ugh. So this one's husband's role. This is the one that you wanted to talk on. My husband understands it's part of his job to be the protector of our family and wants to do it well. The problem for him is that he's more of a gentle soul, a lover, not a fighter, and doubts his ability to be strong enough or aggressive enough when the time comes to protect. He has the potential for the emotional side of it because he is very passionate and sometimes that turns into aggression. The problem is he doesn't actively take on the role because he is insecure something bad will happen and he won't be able, he won't be enough to stop it. Okay, so let's, 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 can we... That I know this is a short email. Right. And that was probably almost the end of it. Well, there's one sentence left. Okay. But. Can we go back to the top and read? Um, just go until I say stop because there's this individual things. I saw this while I was driving to mm-hmm. the, the money guy this morning. My husband understands it's part of his job to be the protector of our family and wants to do it well. The problem for him is that he's more of a gentle soul, a lover, not a fighter. Okay, pause. So good. Mm-hmm. It's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. So being a gentle soul is great. The problem is, is he's done absolutely nothing to make himself a dangerous human being. Mm -hmm. And you should. So go box, go do jujitsu, go do firearms training, something, go do something to test your manhood. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be violent. You don't have to, to want or crave physical altercation. The best way, the best fucking way to avoid dangerous situations is to leave before it becomes dangerous. Right. If I'm going to do something, like if we're driving, I don't ever let my, my gas tank go below a quarter of a tank ever. 
Mm-hmm. Because in the event that I need to get gas and we're not in a very safe spot, I'm going to wait until we get into a safer spot, even if I'm carrying, mm-hmm. because I don't want to put myself in a situation where I'm going to have conflict or I am going to have to be even more hyper aware of my surroundings because of the area. Simple things. Back to the door. I know who's coming and going. I look for threats. It's not hard to have situational awareness. If something doesn't feel right to me, we're leaving. Right. And I'm not questioning it. I'm I'm not. And and I would much rather us leave and get in the car and find out some really bad shit popped off while, while we're driving mm-hmm. versus being in the building when it does. Right. So all he needs to do in that aspect is situational awareness and start doing jujitsu, boxing, some sort of training and learn, learn, learn firearms mm-hmm. if you can, if it's legal where you're at to even do that. That's that's the first part of that. Go ahead. Okay. He doubts his ability to be strong enough or aggressive enough when the time comes to protect. All right. So your lack of, of ability, you know you have it. And if you want to be that man and you're okay with being a pussy or a coward, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. You, you should at least train. If nothing else, it's good for you. Right. You will learn discipline. I think that all men should go through some sort of, of training, whether, you know, just boxing is enough. Mm-hmm. martial arts something martial arts is not gonna help you in a street fight no it's not but it'll build some confidence and it'll make it so that you're not afraid to get punched in the face right there's something train with a firearm get your concealed weapons permit there's a whole lot of things that you can do to give you even a little bit of confidence and that little bit of confidence is the difference between most people because a lot of people feel like that a lot of people have been coddled so much in life that they're afraid of conflict i, I just don't get it and if he really feels that way Martial arts isn't expensive. No. You can go a couple times a week for like 50 to 100 bucks a month. It's really not that bad. Mm-hmm. Um, jiu-jitsu is a good way too because you're going to get around other men who want to compete and test themselves. It may make you competitive. I don't know. I, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. just There's a lot to this, which is why I was like, it's only a paragraph. And I was like, right. we got to read this. He has the potential for the emotional side of it because he is very passionate and sometimes that turns into aggression. Pause. So he's passionate, which means he loves. And mm-hmm. if he loves, he's he's going to be willing to protect those that he loves. Right. And if you are not even remotely trained and you think that something pops off and you have to defend your loved one, you're going to get an adrenaline dump mm-hmm. and your fight or flight's going to kick in. And if you fight and that adrenaline dump happens, your muscles start shaking. You can't stand. You can't walk. Everything happens super fucking fast. And like you don't have muscle memory training in order to do anything. You can get fucking, you're going to get hurt. Your ass is going to get handed to you, right. especially if you're dealing with multiple people. Mm-hmm. So that's a problem. The problem is he doesn't actively take on the role because he is insecure. Something bad will happen and he won't be enough to stop it. Okay. So that aspect means he needs to learn situational awareness, the OODA loop Mm -hmm. and focus that shit and do everything that you can do in a situation to look for threats, look for uneasy situations, look for things that could potentially cause someone harm and be hyper vigilant. Because the best way to keep you safe and out of danger is to not be there when danger happens. Right. So if he can learn that aspect, all the other shit that I said is secondary. Mm -hmm. Because when things start to go wrong, he can be the protector and lead. You don't have to physically protect somebody. You don't. If if we're somewhere where there's like foul shit popping off and people are getting shot. And I notice that it's coming. We're getting the fuck out of there. I'm not going to try to play a superhero. Right. I'm not. Unless there's kids involved. Mm Mm-hmm. So getting, getting the loved ones out of the way of danger is, is priority number one. That's it. Right. All right. Moving that. Go, go, go take jujitsu classes. Go do boxing. Go do firearms training. You can do, you can do, and I don't mean just like a concealed weapons course. I, I'm willing to bet that if you live in a city with a population more than 200,000, um, there is, there are like situation rooms where you can do combat close quarter combat training Mm -hmm. and you can do time shooting where you got to walk through an obstacle course and shoot and learn to shoot and move shoot and move shoot and move and i um, want to do that yeah there's um i'm almost positive that there's a place here but it's like a club Mm. and that's the only reason why i haven't we haven't done that because i i want to do i want to do cqb really bad right um anyways that that email man if you are a coward and you know you're a coward the only thing that you can do is be hyper aware Mm-hmm. And if you're a coward, you probably already are hyper aware and you can play the protector by getting your family the fuck out of danger before danger happens. That was why I wanted you to read that email because I feel like that that was pertinent information that every man needs to hear. Yeah, I liked that. That was good. Good information. Good information. 
Where are we at recording wise? Uh, an hour and 24 minutes, but I'm going to cut out all your math earlier. So probably like an hour and 15 minutes. Okay. This will not be a three hour podcast, but I'm okay with that. Cause sometimes it's not necessary. And with the amount of content that we're putting out lately, I, I don't want people to get sick of us. I, I am really, I, you know, I have imposter syndrome and all this. Like, I don't know why people would want to listen to us on the internet in the first place. Oh, yeah. I have no idea. But people love it. And I don't want to get to a point where we've put out so much content that people are like, oh, another one. And right. then just stop watching, you know? That's why I was originally talking about doing just one or two episodes a week and leaving it at that and dropping the third episode. Mm-hmm. And we talked about that heavily. And we've added two more days of recording. <laughs> I don't know. I'm having fun with it, though. So yeah. even if it doesn't, you know, people get sick of us, they get sick of us. It is what it is. Next email. Help me help him and myself. Okay. Help. I need somebody. Hi, guys. First and foremost, I love y'all. Your content has really helped me grow, not only as a partner, but I would like to believe as a woman. It took everything in me to read it verbatim and not change it to spouse. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's what that little hiccup was. funny. Because I'm trying to work on it to help you work on it. Because I, yeah, I want to do weird shit every time people send like the the po- positive starts. Yeah, like when you're like, "Hello," I want to be like, "Hello," <laughs> like, right? So when we talked about right. that, and then when they're like, "You guys are my favorite," I'm like, "No way, we're our favorite too." And like, <laughs> I want to be so extra and stupid at the beginning of all of those, and every time it's something different because I I don't want to be, I don't know. You don't want to be it's yourself. Just weird. You don't want to be yourself. Like I love you guys. We love you guys too. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Finger guns. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way that your mouth just moved to say finger. Yeah. That was cute. We still have to do the doorway thing. I know you think I forgot. I didn't forget. I forgot. I didn't. I also didn't forget that I got cookies over there. I know. I and as soon as we're done, I'm going to face fuck those cookies between now and the live stream. And we're going to have the live stream. And we're like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm also thinking I really want mac and cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you're doing out back? Maybe. I want five guy or um Jersey Mike subs. Oh yeah, that's right. The fin for ourselves. Pizza. <laughs> oh, I would have to go pick it up though, and I don't have time for that. Pizza delivers here. Do they? Yeah. We just can't do jets. Oh, I love it when the planets align. Yeah. I love it when we get through emails so mm. we can order food. Hint hint. Nudge nudge. One, two, three, go. <laughs> you flinched at your iPad. <laughs> I was like, one, two, three, go. And I was ready. And then I lost it. And I was like, one, two, three, go. <laughs> Fuck. We're goobers. I'm a goofy goober. Dude, my video game, the video game, not mine, the video game videos that we've got posted on YouTube are really triggering people. People get really butthurt over the way we feel about video games. And it's clips. Obviously, they're not they're not listening to the full context right. of the conversation. They're taking the clip, but they're they're getting like people get angry about that. Like, how dare you talk about video games like that? What that you're deriving intimate attention away from your partner when right. you play for six plus hours a day and yeah. then only go to bed with them? Yeah, escapism. Huh? Crazy. You know, my feelings get hurt too when I'm called on my bullshit. Ooh. I want that as a clip. If it's triggering you, you need to ask yourself why. Por qué? Now to my question. Fortunately, a lot of the advice I've gotten from you guys I have related to or understood. Did I say fortunately or unfortunately? You said fortunately. Thank God, because I was like, how much of a blunder would it be if I just read that and I said unfortunately? I have utilized most of it to my relationship and have started to communicate clearly to my partner. And in a result, he is very receptive. Love that. However, dun, dun, dun. in finding that our communication is clearer when it comes to our intimacy, communication, mood, goals, responsibilities, and all of that good stuff, I feel like we are really on the right track and doing amazing. Okay, so where's the dun, dun, dun? Right. That was... So why, why was there a however? The, the next word is unfortunately, but are you, are you going to tease us again and just say something else really good? Yeah. Is this just a thank you email disguised? Unfortunately, like many of us, my partner has dealt with a few insecurities in his day, and I am one of his first serious relationships. In conclusion. To did some they, of, wait, did they actually write in conclusion? They did, okay. yeah. 
This is really like... I feel like this is a science experiment. Right. They're they're really putting out like the essay prep right now. Yeah. In conclusion, to some of the trauma involving self-image, he does not take compliments well and does not give them well. Most men don't take them well. It took you a really long time to stop telling me to stop giving you compliments. <laughs> right. When it comes down to it, you got to understand that men don't get complimented like women. Right. We don't. In, in the span of a man's life, mm-hmm. he's lucky to maybe pick up 25 to 30 compliments. You guys get that shit every day. Mm-hmm. I love your hair. Oh my God, your eyes are great. I love your glasses. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'll be like, yo, you got new shoes? Those are dope. Yeah. That's the extent of our compliments. We don't get compliments like you do. So, of course, we're not going to take them. When you start fawning over us, it makes us feel uncomfortable because we're not used to hearing the shit. Mm-hmm. As for him not giving it to you, that I mean, that's a whole different process. Yeah. That I, I don't know because... I fawn over you constantly and have no shame in it. So Yeah, you really do. It's nonstop, and I love it. <laughs> I I would be worried if you didn't. Yeah? Yeah. Because if I were you, I wouldn't be able to keep my hands off of myself. Like, Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying really hard to boost my self-confidence. Yeah, yeah I'll, <laughs> I'll take it. Let it ride. Can't wait until I put the shirts, of the, the, the pictures of the shirts on, on yeah. Discord. I'm excited to see everyone's reactions to how they look. Yeah. I really hope we sell all the t-shirts. I think they'll sell within 10 minutes. Yeah, I hope so. I didn't do a big run, so. Yeah. We might get I stuck just, with some sizes, but I don't think we will. I just can't imagine selling more than 20 t-shirts. You know? I think we're going to sell 310 of them in the course of an hour. Yeah. We will see. We may be wrong. We may get stuck with a whole bunch of t-shirts. Mm-hmm. That would suck. Yep. But I would like like a 3X for a PJ shirt. I didn't order anything bigger than a 2. I would like a 2X as a PJ shirt. (laughs) He has voiced that he has always felt that compliments aren't genuine. Towards him. That's a self-esteem problem. Mm -hmm. Got that. I understand that perspective. Whenever, Whenever anyone pays me a compliment, I'm like, thanks, but I think you're lying. Yep. I'm trying my hardest to continually drop random compliments. And he has gotten a little better, giving me random compliments as well. The only question I keep asking myself is, what can I do to help him help? Ha- uh, ha- <laughs> <laughs> what can I do to make him help him love himself? So you're going to have to stop the negative self-talk when he has it, because right. I'm sure he does, because mm-hmm. that's working for me. I nip that shit. Because me. the more I tell myself I have these flaws, the more it's cemented in, in my brain. Mm-hmm. So as I'm catching myself or you're catching it and making me rephrase it and making it stop, the better I believe I am. And like right now, I don't feel good about myself. Right. I don't. I'm eating cookies and pizza and I'm still under 220 pounds. Yeah. So all that fucking matters to me is that that scale doesn't go over 220 to 225. Mm-hmm. I'm like 217, 218 every day when I weigh myself. So I'm I'm content with that. Right. But there are days like after I got sick where I I fucking was thinned out again. I was like, oh, man, I look great for like a day. (laughs) Um, But I I really do have body dysmorphia. Yeah. So I do have days where I look in the mirror. I'm like, oh, I look okay today. Mm -hmm. But there you don't like I'm willing to bet you that that man has trauma that he has not divulged to you. I've told you one of my really big ones, the embarrassing thing in the cafeteria. Like yeah. there, there are things that will haunt somebody for the rest of their life. And when that embarrassment or that hurt is cemented in our bodies, like it's a lot to get past that because you live your entire life with that, that situation in your brain. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, things continue to add to that and it just piles on top and you feel the way you feel. So you need to stop the negative self-talk and just c- continuously boost them up. Mm-hmm. And if you have, um, Positive affirmations is one of your love languages. You need to tell him that. Be like, hey, it makes me feel really really good when you compliment me. And I know that it makes you uncomfortable to hear it, but I need you to to throw them my way Mm -hmm. to let me know that you still find me attractive or that I'm still mattering to you or or whatever. Um, Check-ins. This this is a great conversation for a check-in because you never know if he might actually divulge Mm -hmm. what it is that makes him feel the way that he does. Everybody knows your flaws. Like, you know. You may you may put it out there like you're some hot shit, but deep down, you know you have insecurities about who you are, mm-hmm. your body, your brain, whatever it may be, and you know exactly what your insecurities are. And you may not you may not want to be like, yeah, I would change this, this, and this, because you're told that you're supposed to love yourself and, and you should always put that out there. But you know damn well that, that there are things about you that if you could change it, you would. Yeah. Everyone has it. Mm-hmm. You talking about how I make you rephrase things because they're so negative. 
something that I've started doing is verbalizing me correcting myself. And I'm doing that in hopes that it makes you feel more comfortable doing it out loud as well. Yeah. I do it a lot. I, I started doing it at work, actually. Yeah. Like, I'll do something. I'll be like, come on, you dumb bitch. And I'm like, no, I'm not a dumb bitch. I'm just frustrated right now. And this task is overwhelming me. And I just forgot something. Yeah. Well, I did that earlier on the yeah. computer. I was like, fucking dumbass. I'm, I hate my fucking life. I was like, I don't really hate my life. I just, I made a bonehead mistake. And now I have to find the file and blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. You saying that out loud made me happy. Yeah. Yeah. My life is dope as fuck. I really don't hate my life. I just, I, you know, it's one of those things that... I, Darn it has never been in my vocabulary. It's always one fucking extreme when it comes to me messing up and then mediocrity everywhere else when it comes to to my normal shit. Right. You know, and there's, you know, the the difference between good and great is a a big thing and it's never great. It's always good. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? I would rather be at the great end. Right. Working towards it. Good is the enemy of great. I feel like I can do a little more, although I may be thinking too far into it. I would like your guys' perspective. Do I just keep giving voice compliments and doing small flirty stuff, or is there a way to up my game and take that one step further to show my support and acknowledgement that he is growing? P.S. I want to say I don't want to fix or change him. I just want to help him grow. Good. That's, a, that's awesome. Uh, what? She said... Let me know. I was shaking typing it because she said, if you have any questions regarding this, let me know. I was shaking typing it. I was so excited to talk to you guys and understand if I made any mistakes or typos. <laughs> um, I mean, you got a whole lot of growth going on there mm-hmm. and, and the self-awareness. I, I'm kind of big on that right now. I, yeah. I've got this whole thing in my head that accountability is one thing, but being self-aware and being like acknowledging your shortcomings and know where you have room for growth and, and know where you could definitely pick up the slack and, and whether or not you're a hard worker in this aspect and like that self-awareness is huge. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I'm kind of on that kick right now. Um, but she is, she's very self-aware of the situation and she realizes that she wants more compliments. Right. She realizes that she's trying to help him grow as a man and, and like being able to accept compliments and feel good about himself and, and all of that. Everything that we've said is exactly what you need to be doing. Right. Um, compliment him when he gets dressed Mm -hmm. if he's a guy that always wears basketball shorts and shit around the house when he puts his jeans on compliment his jeans it's not a big deal it's Mm -hmm. not you know it's not going to be the end of the world for him it's not going to fucking like go to his his head or whatever but you know i wear basketball shorts constantly and every time i put my jeans and boots on you're like "Mm, damn Mm. and like i i know that you like me in basketball shorts you tell me that but you see me in it constantly so me like even putting on my dickies today you're like oh I like looking at your kneecaps and, <laughs> and a jean style fabric. Yeah. Makes you look rough. See, that's that's all it takes. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't take much. It really doesn't. Your calves are looking good, too. You can't even see my calves. I can see it from the side. Let's see if I can flex them. I am genetically gifted in the legs. I don't have genetic gifts anywhere else. <sighs> but my legs have always been yeah. that. I can tell like your legs look great and your bottom is just benefiting ha- from that too. And, and since we've been together, I haven't trained my legs, but maybe four times. Mm. Don't have to. Good for you. Yeah. Big old tree trunks. <sighs> Genetics for the win. Any more? Uh, yes. Okay. Over there fucking daydreaming. I like nature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get it. Cause you yeah, said I got it. Tree trunks. This one is short. Question and a compliment. Okay. Hello, I found you guys on TikTok, and I now watch your YouTube channel. Good, love that. I want to start by saying I appreciate your content. I am a 21-year-old woman, and your videos have helped me learn what I should expect from relationships, and that what I have been shown is not even bare minimum. Uh, God, I fucking hate that term so much. I know. My question is, what advice would you give your 21-year-old versions of yourself with the knowledge that you now have in your 40s? Mm. Not only about relationships, it can be any advice. You go first. I'm not in my 40s. Oh, damn it. You're not wrong. So that was directed towards me then, huh? I mean, I can jump on the bandwagon, but I don't have all the wisdom that comes with the experience of roaming the earth. Yes, longer than is, I have been. This is, there's a lot. Like, that's such a loaded thing. Like, there's right. so much there. So, um, me talking to 21-year-old me, 
I wouldn't have listened to, to me now anyways. I was thinking that there were, there's nothing that I would tell even 18 year old me. Right. That would get through my fucking <clears throat> thick head to be like, okay, you're right. I, I have people that I, I would, I would have looked up to at that age, mm -hmm. but I know that I wouldn't have listened to, well, maybe I would, I don't know. You can't really, it's a what if scenario. It is. It really is. So, um, things that I would tell somebody that's 21 years old, that's just starting their life. Um, start a Roth IRA. Do that now because that's untaxable money. When you check, when you check out at 60, if you pay into it for the next 40 years, you can retire. If the market doesn't die and, and dollar doesn't devalue, it's, that's your retirement. Mm -hmm. Um, and I didn't even know what that was in my twenties. Um, learn to communicate, learn body language. Take a sales course, even if you're not in sales, because everything that you do is sales related. So like when you meet somebody and you want to sell whatever you're selling or you want to get them to buy your product or buy your brand or you want to anything, you're selling yourself as your brand. So take a, a, a marketing course. It doesn't have to be like a, you know, a deep sales college course. Just read some sales books so that you can understand sales. Um, what else? Don't hold on to grudges. Mm -hmm. that's a big one for me. It took me until I was in my forties to realize that me not forgiving people is only hurting me Right. because when I don't forgive and let go, I'm the one holding on to shit and the people who did me dirty don't give a fuck that they did me dirty. So I, I'm only bothered. I'm the one bothered by that, not them. Right. So th that would be one. Um, I would say don't let your emotions control you. See, I, yeah. I mean, to an extent, all, all of my big life, like big things have come from struggle. You want to see somebody do really well, break their heart. Right. Real but shit. even then, when your heart is broken, you don't give into the emotion and just sit on your couch and do absolutely nothing. No, no, I don't. I don't. Right. So you don't let your depression and your emotions right. and your anger dictate your life. You get that shit in check. Yeah. You can listen to your emotions, but you don't let it lead you down a road when you want to go the other way, but that one's hard work. Yeah. No, that's the hard work thing is not, so, I don't, I've never shied away from hard work. Yeah. Ever. I obsess and focus and grind and, and will outwork everyone in the room every time. I, I can't say every time, but mm -hmm. I'd like to believe that. I, I think that there are people out there who are much better at things than I am and my ability to learn and overcome things. Like, you know, I, I don't know shit about discord and I don't have any desire to learn about discord, which is why Zeke and Jen are doing everything in discord. But if I needed to, I could sit down in the course of a day and master discord. Mm -hmm. I've taught my every, everything I know about video. Everything I know about photography is all self-taught. Everything I know about editing is self-taught. Everything that I know about personal training, I did on my own. Like, I mean, I do have a personal training certification, but like I did the work. Nutrition, same thing. If I'm passionate about something and I, I need to know something, I'm going to do the work. Marketing, um, social media aspects, all that shit. I taught all that myself. So I, I have an ability to learn and, and it's not something that everyone has. I'm not afraid to do the work. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I would tell myself to 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 continue to do that because I am where I am because I was able to to just not quit. I had faith in myself and and believed as a teenager that I would be where I am. And anyone who knows me as a teenager, they've all said, "You did exactly what you said you were going to do in life." I did it, mm -hmm. and and now I'm trying to do new shit. And like I'm in a whole new field with all of this. I have no fucking idea how this is going to play out. Right. And I've got people around me that are doing the research so that I don't have to, and they're filling me in. But I'm learning it as I go. The only difference is, is I don't have to sit down and do all the research. They're doing the research in all these different facets. And I have advisors telling me how to move and do things. And they're not really even advisors. They're just people that have a little bit more knowledge than I do. Watch out for snakes. Understand that people people will, will fucking step over your lifeless body to take the things that you covet. Mm -hmm. Because they see what you have and they want it. And, and just because someone tells you they love you doesn't mean that they do. Uh, there's a lot of heartache in my life because I trusted people that I shouldn't have trusted. Don't loan it if you can't afford to lose it. I mean, I could do this all day. I could, I could literally do this all day long. Yeah. And, and and they're just, they're small life lessons that I had to learn in a really fucked up way to just be that person. Um, If somebody asks you for money and you love them and you give them money, it's not a loan. Mm -hmm. Just give them the fucking money because they're not going to pay you back. And if they do pay you back, it's going to create problems and they're going to be resentful for having to pay you back if you're doing better than them and like, it's just not worth it. So if somebody needs money and you love them and you want to help them out, just give it to them. Don't expect them to pay you back because if you do, it's going to destroy the friendship. Mm -hmm. If you can't afford to buy a car with 50% down, don't buy the car. Um, if you don't plan on keeping the car, 
and definitely lease the car unless you drive a lot. Um, because no matter what happens, you're making the payments on it. And if you pay it all at 50% or you buy the car outright, you're still paying the payments on it regardless. Um, create a vision board. God, I wish I'd had a vision board when I was in my 20s. Um, Not everybody is who is your friend wants the best intentions for you. Oh, yeah. Nobody nobody has your best intentions at heart. Mm-hmm. No one. People, people will celebrate your success to your face and then fucking just utterly rip you apart behind and everybody wants to be with you at the top but nobody wants to be with you when you're struggling and building Mm -hmm. and no one wants to do the work with you while you're in there grinding and 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 doing the thing and people are hemming and hawing and doubting you remember that shit because those are the same people that are gonna have their fucking hands out when you make it i i I really could do this all day long yeah i I don't want to continue with that let's we got enough time maybe to do one more we have 15 minutes you want to do a thank you yes end with a fit end with a thank you all right so it starts with disclaimer we are both men i am a trans man and the boyfriend. Oh, I remember this one. Yeah. There's even a photo of that one. Yes. Dope. Love that. So boyfriend, I'm assuming just boyfriends. Yeah. Boyfriend is a born he, man. Yeah. He explains it. Yeah. Cis man, for those who don't know. Yeah. I hate that term, but yes. I know. And they both use he, him pronouns. And it says 11 days. 11 days of following your advice turned my already healthy relationship even healthier. Me and my partner are in a relationship that happens to have an age gap as well. 15 year difference. Wow. So when I found you guys on TikTok, March 9th, it was revealing, relieving to find a relationship dynamic similar to ours with similar core values. My partner and I have been in a romantic relationship for a year this month with being friends for going on four years now. In that time, we had seen each other at rock bottom, and it never changed how we saw each other. That's huge. That is really huge. It, it really is a big deal to see somebody at their worst. Mm-hmm. You have. You've seen me at my worst. And, like, you haven't got to live it with me, but you've seen me in that days. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's a big deal. I hope you never go back there. I fucking hope so, too. I really, truly don't want to ever live like that ever again. Anyways. It did bring us closer. Early 2022, we started working together, and in that time, we recognized we had mutual romantic feelings. Neither of us were looking, as we both had been scored to what we believed was no return. Immediately before beginning in a relationship, we had had a good hour to two hour long chat about new boundaries, baggage that we hadn't talked about that could potentially affect a romantic relationship, and the nuance of our boundaries. That's fucking huge. What we see as cheating, disrespect, etc. And agreed we would communicate because neither of us were willing to go through a roommate relationship again. That is exactly what people are missing in their dating phases. Right. Sitting down and talking about boundaries, the baggage that hasn't been discussed already. Yep. And then the nuance of their boundaries, what we consider cheating. Right. What we consider is disrespect. Because most people get the rose-colored glasses and they're infatuated with each other. Mm-hmm. They had a friendship beforehand. You know what I mean? Like that's just that's the way to do it. It is. It, it fucking is. I bet they're happy as fucking. Oh life, yeah, dude. I love that. I love that too. I'd say the initial honeymoon phase phased out about the time we had a miscarriage in September. It was really hard for both of us, and he initially didn't know how to support me as I was a wreck. Not only was I experiencing a loss, but my mom was making the entire thing about how bad it hurt her that I miscarried on my birthday, including making a vague two day late birthday post about how she loves me and she's sorry she posted late and that I understand why with everything that's going on right now. I don't like that. I really don't fucking like that. That's manipulative as shit. It really is. People are fucked up. Why not? Ugh. Oh, I fucking hate people so much. Especially as a mother. <clears throat> Why is this about you? Your child. Did you hear that? Mm-hmm. Did I fuck up something over here? No, you just you hit it. No, I didn't. Well, it sounded like it. It sounded like you hit it. I did. At least in my headphones. Anyways. Especially as a mother who is witnessing their child go through something that's probably going to be one of the most painful moments of their life and make it about you. Yeah. It's okay to feel. As a mother, like you, you have that feeling. I, right. I get that, but it's not about you. It's not. Main character syndrome needs to be turned way the fuck down. Mm. And I lost one of my jobs just a couple months before, and I had a lot of guilt and shame due to it. C- completely my fault, and I accept the consequences. Though I luckily got a job, got the job back a month later. I mean, I hope it was worth the job to go back to. Right. 
And I feel that time separated us. Not enough to lose intimacy, but enough to feel for a few months. Oh, but enough to feel for a few months. We both made the conscious decision to be better. Decision to be better. He encouraged me to get the tattoo I wanted to help me cope and heal. And I encouraged him to look at his better job offers. We remind each other so often how much we love and appreciate appreciate each other for the little things and has gotten so much better since. But I feel something was missing and I couldn't put my finger on it. March 9th rolls around. I'm on a smoke break scrolling through TikTok and your video about resetting default settings and it really put things in perspective. Love that. I know exactly what video they're talking about. Yeah, which one? I mean, obviously it's about re- resetting the default, right. but I don't remember. It's a clip. Right. So it was you talking about you recognizing your default settings. You have to change. You have to actively work to change your default setting. Right. The way I react to things. Okay. Right. We've had a couple conversations about that in AJ clips. So I don't, yeah. I just post what he puts on fucking the drive. Sometimes when we communicate, we've begun using trigger words and never realized it. Mm. Neither of us realized that I'm not looking for an argument triggered our fight or flight so much until we watched the video. Since I've been watching the podcast on YouTube, a lot of things we've already had in our relationship, but I've definitely made the conscious decision to add to or even adjust things I do based off the advice that resonates. And within 11 days, today is 3 20, 2023. I have seen a huge difference in both of us. It feels like the honeymoon phase all over again. Yes. That's the goal. That is the goal. That is what we talk about constantly keeping that alive. Right. And it's work. Mm -hmm. But when you have a flame, it's a lot easier to keep that ember going than it is to start a new fire. It is. And and it really does. When you start to notice that the flame's going down, things don't feel quite as warm as they used to. You need to fucking stoke the fire back up. Pay attention to that shit. Right. I fucking love that. In 11 days. 11 days. It's gangster. I've started putting more effort into my whole appearance. Good. Even if it's just a cute pair of leggings and a t-shirt. I can tell, I can just tell it helps alleviate his mood. He works a very stressful position that he has no choice but to bring home with him. And realizing something so simple can make him happier has been everything to me. Pause. He needs to take the, um, he needs to take that decompression time Mm -hmm. from, from, from work to the house. And even if that means just sitting in the car we're coming in and having the pleasantries and just decompressing for 10 or 15 minutes that you need that shift from work life to home life. Right. Because if it is that stressful and he's having a hard time when he brings it home, um, that's going to create tension long term. Mm-hmm. That decompression time needs to happen. You guys need to, to discuss that. Do the check ins and figure out what he needs for decompression time. Yeah. Everybody needs decompression. Yeah, time. It, absolutely. If somebody goes, no, I don't need it. It's just I can't let it go. Because you haven't figured out what works for you yet. I've started bringing out his progress more too. He struggles with anger issues, which is part of our pre-relationship conversation. And he's worked really hard on it within the last year. In the beginning of the week, he went to slam his hand on the desk in anger while venting about an employee, but stopped himself and fidgeted with his pen and clothes instead. In that moment, I was so fucking proud of him. I knew bringing it up then wouldn't have been the right time. So later that night, when he began talking about how frustrated he was about the earlier situation, I let him know that I let him say what he had to say. And before I responded, I said, I want to pause for a minute. First, I was listening and I will respond. But I wanted to acknowledge earlier and how proud of you I was for it. And his whole demeanor changed. Yep. He thanked me and told me how hard it is, but he's truly trying. He vented for a few more minutes and it wasn't as frustrated as before. And it definitely didn't go on as long as it would have had I not said anything. Yeah. He, he was seen like he, the efforts when you fucking recognize your spouse's efforts to be better. Mm-hmm. It, it, it makes you want to work harder. Right. When you acknowledge the things that I do and like I, you can actively see the work that I'm putting into myself. All I can hear in my head is that it's fucking working. Yeah. Like. That's all I think. It's fucking working. Even if there's a step back or two, there's always going to be a little bit of regression before you make a larger leap. That night, he held me lovingly like always, but tighter. Like he more than loved me, but needed me as well. And it was amazing. I know you guys don't want to take all of the credit, but I do owe you guys a thank you for being willing to put yourselves out there and talk to us without all confusing buzzwords and medical jargon. Mm. Those buzzwords get me, man. Yeah, they get me too. I feel like it's dumbing us down. I because, agree. Right? Because all those words, mm-hmm. every one of those words already has a way to describe that thing. 
Right. But now we're changing the way that it's described so that people have to guess what the fuck you're talking about because it's a new made up phrase. It's a broader meaning. <clears throat> right. You're taking two or three things, joining them together and be like, okay, well, this is what it is. Right. That way it can apply to a larger majority of people. Right. But it's doing a disservice because you're not learning how to properly articulate yourself. Right. You're using broad statements. You know, our daughter says constantly, I want you. Yeah. And now I'm starting to ask her, what do you want? Do you want my attention? Do you want me to help you with something? Do you want me to get something for you? Do you want me to pick you up? What right. do you want me for? I, I think that I, I personally think that when she does that, she wants the attention. Yeah. And she doesn't understand what attention means. So she just repeats herself. That's why I'm trying but to she's get her three. Yeah. When you're in your 20s or you're in your 30s and you're using terms like narcissist, not realizing that it just means a selfish person mm -hmm. or you're throwing around gaslighting or you're throwing around all these fucking stupid buzzwords when there's already terms stonewalling all these fucking terms that already have descriptions mm -hmm. but you're using a vague broad statement that has an umbrella term that you know you know what i mean like you then have conversations with people like wait a minute i need you to explain that i need you to define that word so that we're on the same page mm -hmm. whereas if you just use regular fucking english instead of all this made up bullshit we wouldn't have to do that. Right. I don't think we'd have made this much progress in such a short period of time without your valuable advice. I don't think you would have made this type of project uh, progress in such a short time if you weren't like ready to, to do so. Right. You made a decision to ingest this shit and then you made a decision to share it. You, 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 you ingested the information, went home, made a fucking plate for your man and, and you guys ingested it together. And now you're fucking living a dope ass life. All, mm -hmm. all we did was talked about it. Right. And, and I fucking, this is it. This is the whole reason that we do this. Mm -hmm. it, it, this is not going to just make your relationship better. No. You're going to have better boy, employee uh, and boss relations. You're going to have better relationship with your family. We have people that are emailing us about, you know, their kids and their relationships and like mother-in-laws with stepdads and mm -hmm. all this crazy shit because the communication is communication. It's fucking universal. You have to be able to talk to people. Right. And when you have those tools and you're, you're listening to understand instead of to speak, you're going to get a much different conversation. Mm -hmm. it, even if that means you realize that the other person is just listening for their turn to talk. You're not going to invest as much into the conversation because you realize what's happening. You're not going to have a deep connection or think you have a deep connection because, mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? I don't know. This fucking, that's a great email. Was there more to that? No, that's it. They included photos. And I just want to say, I can't tell that there's a 15 year difference between them. Yeah, I couldn't either. They both look like they're in their 20s. Yeah. Yep. Good for you, but I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, I love that email. You know, I really needed that, too, after receiving that email saying that we weren't inclusive enough. Yeah. Like, I, I really needed to hear that. Yeah. Because I like to think that what we talk about can be applied to any situation and that we never deliberately make anybody feel like they're not part of the conversation. I tell people all the time, if you're respectful to me, I'm going to be respectful, respectful to you. The moment you get out of line, I'm, I'm going to get out of line back. I'm, I'm at that point in my life where I want to see everyone around me doing good mm -hmm. and and i don't even associate with people who are fucking negative and playing that game when i realize that you have a negative nancy mindset bye i don't want yeah. you around me bro like your your depressive bullshit is fucking with my mental i can't have that yeah i've really closed my circle up a lot because there were a lot of people in my circle who daily when i would walk in or i'd walk into a room they were at i'd be like hey good morning i want to fucking kill myself yeah yeah dude I like come on man that. How, how is that serving you when you wake up and you're feeling depressed like that and you just mope through the day and you get around other people and you mope around those other people? All you're doing is bringing the other people down. AJ just said that we're 88 people from 33,000 on YouTube. So hopefully tonight during the live stream, we'll hit we'll hit 33,000. For those insane. of you who listen on Spotify and on Apple and iHeartRadio. Oh, I got to make that call. iHeartRadio, Stitcher, um, all of that shit. Go to fucking YouTube, subscribe mm -hmm. to our YouTube channel. There is so much more content on YouTube. We are currently releasing Monday at 11, Wednesday at 9, Friday at 9, Thursday at 7, Sunday at 8. eight. There's a very strong possibility that the reaction channel is going to get content throughout the week too. Like you guys are missing out on a fuck ton of content. And I'm not willing to put any more content on, on the streaming services than we already are Monday and Thursday releases mm -hmm. because we're not making money on it. Right. I'm not doing this shit for free. I want to make this a business. And if that means we we do priority on YouTube and Patreon, that's just going to be what it is. Right. So I got nothing else. This was a two hour one. 
I'm glad we met two hours because now I have to work. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to eat some cookies and order a sub. Okay. And call it a night. Yes. We'll see you guys on the live stream. Bye, guys.